And today's dish is all presented by Stone Academy. Do you want to sing it? Back streets, back, all right. I know you want to be in a boy band. Well, that was in sync, that thing. Anyway, <laughs> bye, bye, bye. bye, bye, bye. It's a right. different. No, no. not the same. I, I was always an NSYNC fan, but I've grown to love the Backstreet Boys, the biggest boy band in the history of boy bands, I, I guess. Today they're releasing a new album titled DNA and a World Tour. Uh, it's going to be opening in May in Europe and here in the U.S. in August. The closest performance to us, because okay. I know you're going to want to go. Right. New York and Boston, so you can check that out. Great, and it's kind of interesting because for the album, which is called DNA, they mm -hmm. analyzed their own DNA profiles to see what exactly uh, each element, each group member was bringing to the band. So then they tried to implement that in their music and their own styles, which is uh, kind of interesting. Do you have a favorite from the Backstreet Boys? Justin Timberlake. J Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Wrong one. <laughs> you, oh, you, that's you sure? You, you sure you don't want to change it? Lance, Lance from the no. Lance Bass. No, dude, Lance no. is from NSYNC as well. How about um. Kevin from Backstreet Boys? Uh -huh. Kevin's my personal favorite. He's like a puma prancing throughout the jungle on stage, making what? love to the audience. No, he. Are if, you joking? No, I'm. I'm I, I've seen them in concert twice. This guy's like an animal on stage. He, he's got the long, flowy hair. He, uh -huh. He's like. The, the, the really I'm going to have guy. to check out. Maybe I'll, I'll check out the new DNA record. But all the Backstreet Boys are on stage, and then Kevin is just like, the he, he's just doing his own thing. He's got his own sideshow going on the, uh, the, the whole time on stage. So he's my I'll take your personal word for favorite. It. Go, go <laughs> check out their new song. It's, it's called uh, DNA. Very good. That's what we'll do. And from nostalgic bands to toys, a new class has been inducted into the National Toy Hall of Fame. Which is exciting. Yes. The Magic 8 Ball is the did newest one. Did you have one. one of those? Uh, I did back in the day. I, th I think it was my brother's, though. I, uh, Uno is also inducted. And Pinball. That's a classic right there. They're all being recognized as classic toys. And this year was a little different because fans got to vote for their favorites and 68 toys have been inducted into the Hall of Fame of all time. Yeah, that was uh, Justin Timberlake's favorite game, I think. So. <laughs> what was your favorite as a kid? I mean, do you have a, a childhood toy that really just... Um, well, Cabbage Patch Kids and uh -huh. Pound Puppies. Pound Puppies. Are you familiar with no, Pound Puppies? But the, they were so cute. Well, so uh, to me, that's a pillow pet. What? Similar, but that I think was also a thing—a pillow Back pet. Back then, yeah. Still, so so what were these? They're just—they were just stuffed animals that you rescued, little... and they were dogs, and they all had little cute stories. They look kind of sad. I mean, they were because they were coming from the pet. Oh, oh okay, wow. Well, th <laughs> this is a mission accomplished. This is a real uplifting what about toy you? here. Well, I was going to say this is like the the old school Paw Patrol right there. My uh, favorite was Stretch Armstrong. That's, that's me and my pop Oh my gosh! Playing with Stretch Armstrong. <laughs> wow, you, you, he's I, long. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, he is. But he it's, stretched him. He, it, it stretched that guy out, I guess. But it's interesting, he, he never had a shirt on. He, he always just had a bikini on. You had to stretch him out, and that was it. That was the whole, that was the whole Did bit. Did you gnaw on him? I understand that you actually like no. would bite on, Come on. stretch. We, we don't have to talk about how he used to bite. <laughs> well, it was a weird material yeah. anyway, yeah. No, right? I know, yeah. So Stretchy. I was a curious young boy. I guess. I don't know. Okay. Just How stop. Much? They're saying just stop. Just, <laughs> just move on. We touched upon this earlier. How much do you really love those burgers on the grill or bacon? We're talking about <laughs> red meat. Talking about red meat. That's it. I'm a big bacon guy. And uh, this is concerning. I'm, I mean, I, I get it for the health reason. The World Health Organization is recommending a tax after a new study found that meat such as beef, lamb, and pork can cause cancer when eaten in processed forms. That's the key, in processed forms. Now, the thought with a higher price that people wouldn't buy the unhealthy meat. So the meat tax would be 163% of that Yikes, cost. Yikes, that would double the cost of the meats that you were buying. It's called the sin tax. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it'll really deter people. I think people kind of look forward to a steak or bacon. I'll pay whatever I got it for that. Oscar <laughs> Meyer, come on now.